question. What kind of watch is best? Well, there are basically two schools of thought on this. We are not going to look at either one of them, but we are going to look at the watch that made that scene famous. This, of course, is the Casio databank. And what I'm using to introduce this is the uh, Lego office set, which I absolutely love. Uh, every time I walk by this set, I kind of, you know, look at different things and get a little hit of nostalgia. Uh, or I laugh about different things that, that I remember from the show. Uh, so this is such a cool Lego set. My, my oldest son, who's now 12, he loves the office as well. Uh, and he actually put the set together. It was kind of a, it started out to be kind of a combined effort, but he just couldn't wait for me. So he ended up putting the whole thing together. And every time he would find something, he would come running out. He'd be like, you know, here's Stanley with the pretzel from pretzel day. Uh, he would go back and, you know, shortly thereafter, he'd be showing me how in this little drawer there is, I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, you can. There's a shuriken from, of course, Dwight's set dashing weapons all over the office. There's a shroot buck here. Um, we've got the jello with, we've got the jello with a stapler in it. Uh, it doesn't fit on Dwight's desk. So we stick it over here in Pam's office or in Pam's cubicle. Anyway, uh, great little office set. And of course, I'm a huge fan of The Office, which was the primary thing, primary motivator behind me picking up this watch. So I don't want to belabor the, the, lab, the Lego set here. Let's come back and take a look at the Casio databank. Now, I'm not going to go crazy. There are tons and tons of videos out about this watch. You really don't need another one. But I will say a couple of things. First of all, as I said, this is not a watch you buy. I, I mean, maybe there's somebody out there, but but I don't think anyone's looking around in the watch world and saying, you know, the watch that looks best on me and best suits my needs is the Casio databank. I think people are remembering back when they were in elementary school. If you went to elementary school in the 80s, like I did, uh, you desperately wanted a calculator watch, right? If you watched uh, Back to the Future back in those days, like I did, again, you saw the calculator watch. You thought this is the greatest thing in all of history. And, you know, I never did get one. Uh, but of course, now that I have a couple of different watches, I, I couldn't resist picking up this watch and it's pretty easy to get your hands on. You know, you can go on Amazon. In fact, you can even go on Amazon and Google. Uh, you can go on Amazon and type in back to the future watch. You can go on Amazon and type in uh, Dwight Schrute's watch from the office. If you want to get really particular, like I did, you can actually go, there's a couple of web pages that list all of the watches that are found in the office. You can get the model number and everything right um, for the watch that Dwight has. By the way, this is not the watch that Jim has. It's uh, Jim has the metal version of this. Um, and he said he got it. I can't remember what he said he paid for it, but it's a very, very budget price point. Um, so cheaper, I think, than you can, you and I can buy them today on Amazon. Of course, uh, there, there are multiple layers here. You know, Dwight loves everything that I loved when I was 12. And so, uh, by the way, you know, I, many of the things I still love today, uh, and so for me, this watch made a lot of sense. Now, here's what I wasn't expecting about the watch. When you look at it, it looks pretty big and perhaps a little obnoxious. But when you're actually wearing this, uh, there are two things that stand out. First of all, it's not all that um, obnoxious on the wrist because it's pretty flat. Uh, it actually turns out to be pretty comfortable. And the other factor here is it's super lightweight. Actually, there are three things here. It's pretty flat, it's pretty lightweight, and it's contoured so that it actually is bent at the back so it follows your wrist around. Um, so because of all that, this becomes really, really comfortable and really easy to wear. I've got it a little bit too tight. I wouldn't normally have it this tight, but maybe something more like that. Uh, there. So yeah, it doesn't have to squeeze the, the circulation off to your hand uh, the way I had it there. Uh, but you can see this is this is a pretty unobtrusive watch. And, and if you actually have it on your arm, it is very, very lightweight. Like you really don't even notice it. I think it's like 30 some grams, uh, which is pretty darn good. I'm going to go ahead and take it back off. All right. 
and go through a couple of other things about this that I think are probably worth noticing. Uh, first of all, the, the stupid thing is going to last forever. So if you're like me, like this is not going to be the watch that I'm probably going to wear every single day. Uh, but that's fine. You know, this is one of those watches you can throw in a drawer and forget about, and it's going to keep running for like five or 10 years. Uh, and even if you, if the battery completely died, uh, you can pick up a battery for these. I Googled it. It's like a couple dollars. Um, so the, the, there are a lot of actual, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of practical points to be made about this watch. Now, do we need the features that it comes with? If we cycle through the modes here. There's a database. I don't have anything in there. There's a calculator. Uh, I'm not going to try to mess with any math. There's some alarms. There is a timer, stopwatch, sorry. And finally, we're back to time. Uh, so uh, this actually has the features from a digital watch that you might enjoy. It has some extra features such as, you know, a calculator. And back when this was made, you know, it just wasn't a thing to be able to actually store um, any data on your watch. So, it, you know, there's a, there's a sense in which this is, you know, like a precursor to the smartwatches we're all wearing today. Now, it's interesting that uh, we went away from watches. Everyone was wearing smartphones. You know, there's the the movie uh, where those guys try to get a job at Google. Remember, it's um, is it Will Ferrell? No, that's wrong. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, there is a movie out there where these watch salesmen have to quit their job or they lose their job because no one buys watches anymore and they want to go get a job at Google. However, um, Google and the whole tech world have have promoted smartwatches and people have realized, you know, hey, there's there's uh, you know, it's kind of enjoyable to have uh, the time quickly accessible on your wrist. All right. And so this works really good for that. You know, my son talks about wearing it in school because he goes uptown for lunch with his buddies. He needs to know, he needs to know what time he has to be back. Uh, he, you know, it's, it's easier when you're sitting in class and you're not allowed to have your cell phone, you know, he can take a quick look at his wrist and know what time it is uh, and what to expect. And of course, I suppose you could use the calculator. Now, Joel, my son is 12 and he's getting pretty good at math. So he's not going to need the calculator too much. But if you're one of those uh, high school grads working at working in retail who didn't pick up basic arithmetic while you were in school, you know, you'll be able to buy this watch and you'll have a calculator right on your wrist, which can give you the answers that you're looking for uh, whenever someone gives you exact change and you've got to figure out what to how to how to give them the appropriate amount of money back. OK, um, so. Uh, this is a nostalgia purchase for sure, but it's actually a nostalgia purpose that is a pretty practical watch. It's cheap as can be. I think there's like 40 bucks. Uh, they're easy to get. Uh, there are a couple of versions available. They wear really comfortably. They do the job of a watch. By the way, there is a, a light here. So if it's, you know, if you're in the dark, you can see what time of day it is. Uh, and I mean, what day and what year, I guess, if you didn't know that either. Uh, so it's, again, pretty handy tool, despite the fact that this is almost 100% a, a nostalgia sort of novelty type purchase. Um, so, yeah, that's my, my quick rundown on the Casio data bank. Um, you know, not... <laughs> I'm not going to get into anything technical because that, you know, that doesn't make sense, but I did want to just share it with you, share some of the nostalgia, share some of the reasons that I enjoy this. And I'm sure many of you would like it as well. I do want to get your confession down in the comments. Uh, what have you bought purely because, you know, it was cool when you were a kid, uh, purely because, you know, it was in a movie you liked, maybe it's Star Wars memorabilia, maybe it's uh, Back to the Future, maybe it's some other popular movie that, you know, you're, you've, you're such a cult fan of. I know, you know, I'd buy just about anything that had to do with Lord of the Rings. Um, so, let me know down in the comments your nostalgia purchases. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to use the links in the description box. That is super, super helpful. Uh, makes a huge difference for the channel when you use those links, when you go to White Mountain Knives and use the discount code Sharp Stuff. All of that helps me out a tremendous amount. I'll thank you for watching and let's finish off by giving you a quick little panorama of this really epically cool Lego set. All of the characters you love except, and this has been 
quite well discussed. Look at the Dundee there in Michael's office. We've got Ryan and hold on. There we go. We've got Ryan in the conference room. We've got Kevin with the bald head. Uh, anyway, that's just a quick last look at the Lego set that we started with. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon.